Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my February 2024 reading wrap up. So I have four books for you, they're all by Dr. Seuss and as such I'm not going to say a huge amount about them. They're Dr. Seuss, you know. They're fun, um, obviously aimed at kids. I'm a big kid at heart and uh, I'm slowly but surely kind of working my way through all of the Seuss. Dane reads. So I read If I Ran the Zoo, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. I had trouble in getting to Sola Solu and, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street and I will give each of these just a, a regular sort of 3.5 out of 5, they were, they were right. Alrighty everybody, uh, just the one book to wrap up for you today, that is The Assault on Reason, how the politics of fear, secrecy and blind faith subvert wise decision making, degrade democracy and imperil America and the world by Al Gore. Now I don't necessarily agree with all of Al Gore's politics, although I will say I do agree with quite a lot of them. Um, I appreciate his work on the environment as well. I think he's a fellow vegan because of uh, the environmental impact of, of eating plant-based. Um, but yes, the idea here, this is kind of like a precursor to what we see today with like fake news and all of that stuff. Um, it's, you know, the, the, the way that politics has gone from being a two camp thing where you're either for or against me and people don't see the nuances and it's a shame because he's obviously a politician so the people who most need to read this book half of them are going to be people who disagree with this politics and therefore don't see that there can be nuances so therefore they won't read it the other half i guess will be die-hard al gore fans who maybe he then sways to see things against his points of view who knows um my cat is being very distracting in the background there but yes i did enjoy uh, the assault on reason i do want to read an inconvenient truth at some point as well i listened to this via audiobook and it was a good good way to do so i would give it like a pretty strong 3.5 out of 5 decent-ish non-fiction Alright guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, that is The Emerald Wand of Oz by Sherwood Smith, illustrated by William Stout. Uh, this is a new in entry into the Oz series, published in about, I think it was about 2005, something like that. Uh, let's have a little look. Yeah, 2005, very nice. Uh, it's the first of three, I believe, by Sherwood Smith, it's illustrated by William Stout. Um, follows like basically some kids who are the, from the generations after Dorothy. It does have a definite modern feel to it, but in a way that I quite enjoyed. Uh, also, I enjoyed the fact, like, even in the illustrations, the kids have got, like, an electric guitar in their bedroom and stuff. And our two main characters in this, one of them is very much a sceptic and one of them isn't, which added a really interesting vibe to it as well. So, you know, one of them is all like, oh, Oz is amazing. And the other one is like, Oz doesn't exist. And, um... The only thing I didn't like, but I, I understand why they did it like that, is that they end up in Oz from following a tornado, which obviously has been done. And I liked uh, about the uh, later Oz books. I mean, I've read 40, 50 of them by now. And I like the fact that as... Jesus, I just wrecked it trying to take this sellotape off. This is a former library, library copy. Uh, but I liked in those later Oz books how like the authors came up with interesting new ways of sending people to Oz. I just kind of wish they'd uh, continued that tradition here. But overall, probably a four out of five. One of the better ones. Again, it was more approachable from being uh, from the fact that it's a a more modern take on ours as well. So did enjoy. All right, just a few books to wrap up for you. So I read uh, Wish You Were Dead by uh, Peter James. This is one of the quick reads books. So these are designed to help get people into reading. I think actually, when you buy them, they only cost a pound, which is what slightly more than a dollar, like one dollar twenty cents. And, uh, oh hi Biggie. And um, whenever you buy one of these, they then donate another one to, you know, people who are struggling to read. Um, this series is uh, pre Peter James's crime novel series. It's actually been turned into a stage uh, theater show and also a TV series. Um, this is just a little like novella that ties in with that. Basically, Roy Grace goes off on holiday and um, He's sort of tracked down by some old um, old adversaries, some people he locked up a long time ago, and um, we kind of see what happens when they when they try and dispense their own kind of justice against him. So uh, yeah, it was it was it was fun. It wasn't the best written of um, Peter James's books. I have a feeling this was almost written in a rush just to get it out. Um, but yeah, I would still give it like a three point five out of five because I'm a big Peter James fan. You're right in the way, Biggie. Uh, then I read uh, The Big Son of Mercury by Isaac Asimov. This is a book four in the David Star Space Ranger series. Um, I will hopefully be doing a review of this soon. I will uh, let you guys know if that does happen. 
And um, basically, yeah, this is set on Mercury. I don't know if, I can't remember off the top of my head. I know we have Venus. I don't know if each of the um, books in the series. Yeah, we've got Saturn and Jupiter. So it's kind of cool that, um, you know, it goes from planet to planet, basically. And uh, I, I really enjoy the David Starr books. This one was no different. It certainly wasn't my favourite of the lot. Um, I think uh, the Venus one was, was my favourite, even though uh, Asimov himself said that it wasn't scientifically accurate. Um, but yes, probably a strong four out of five would recommend. And then I read Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I have this uh, edition here that's like super dense looking. Um, but actually, I, uh, I listened to it via audiobook. I got the LibriVox edition, um, which is just read by kind of volunteers. And um, it was it was pretty pretty interesting because I, I know bits and bobs about Great Expectations, like I know the characters Pip and Miss Havisham, but I didn't really know the story of it. Um, so that was kind of fascinating to discover what actually happens in this. Dickens is he's good, but he's wordy, you know. So I think audiobooks are kind of the perfect way for, uh, to to enjoy stuff, at least for me. And um, yeah, I'm glad I read it. Uh, would I read it again? Probably not. I will watch movies of it and stuff, I'm sure. Um, but I will hopefully be getting through sort of all the Dickens stuff eventually. I mean, it's a strong 3.5 out of 5. It's a classic for a reason. Dickens could write, you know? Even if he was, like I say, quite wordy. Alrighty guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Superior, The Return of Race Science by Angela Saini. This is non-fiction. Uh, well, the quote on the front puts it well. Roundly debunks racism, racism's core lie. Uh, it's non-fiction about racial science, basically. Um, you know, the Nazis had their own take on racial science back in the day. Uh, Angela Saini is setting the record straight and um, yeah it's one of those books if you consider yourself a member of the Guardian reading tofu eating Bokarati like myself um, you're gonna want to read it it's it's just one of those important reads that shows that actually maybe we're not so different after all you know so yeah I gave it a strong four out of five uh, review coming soon alrighty folks just the one book to wrap up for you today that is L'Encroyable Bar... <laughs> let's start that again L'Encroyable Destin de Gustave Eiffel uh, this is just a short, fun little book published by Le Tour Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower. Uh, it means The Incredible Destiny of Gustave Eiffel and basically tells the story of the guy who designed the Eiffel Tower uh, and it has some fun activities, some quizzes, you can write in it, all of that stuff. Uh, it was a lot of fun, so I'd give this like a 3.5 out of 5. Short but sweet review. I mean, there's not much to say about it. It's only 30 pages, 20 pages. Alrighty, so it's wrap-up time, and I have just two books to chat to you about. The first is Les Expressions Francaises Expliquées en Femme by uh, Les Editions Bonhomme de Chalmain. Um Basically, it's French expressions explained to kids. So, for example, couper le poire de, uh, which means to share something equally. Um, so, there's lots of, it's just like idioms, basically. Uh, un tempest dans un verre d'eau, so that's actually uh, a tempest in a glass of water. A lot of them are, are um, English proverbs as well, and it actually explains in this when they originally came from English too, so it's kind of got the etymology behind them as well as just the expressions and some examples of them being used. Overall, a lot of fun. I did enjoy it. I would give it a 4 out of 5. Uh, definitely a good book to read if you are um, trying to learn French like I am. Uh, and then we have Geek Nation by Angela Saini, How Indian Science Has Taken Over the World. So, as you can tell from my recent reads, I'm a big Angela Saini fan. This is probably her weakest, but it's also her first. And the reason why it's weak isn't necessarily to do with the writing or the research she did or anything like that. It's just that it's about 10, 15 years old now. So, it's talking about, you know, here's where India will be by 2020. And sometimes India wasn't quite there. Actually, I would argue China kind of took over where, where India was. Because um, they're talking about, like, the next big apps being developed in India. And it's like, no, they're all coming from China, mate. Um, but, yeah, really interesting stuff about Indian science, about Indian culture. Um, and the history of science in India as well and how it's kind of it's all got to be seen through kind of a colonialist uh, lens as well in terms of you know overcoming the oppression that the, that the British sort of put their way so yeah overall Geek Nation by Angela Saini uh, probably a, a week four out of five okay well apparently that's it so um, yeah this is now May so I should have finished this a long time ago but, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.